Steve Blank and Alex Osterwally got together creating the business model competition. Launched in 2000, 2011. Um, uh, 2012, they had uh, 12. 2013, they're predicting 50 uh, contests this year. The, the, the main event is going to be held at Harvard. Last year, they had more than 10,000 business uh, plan submissions in the country of Chile alone. And and if you if you want to if you want to understand how to create a high, high potential startup that I will invest into, go to businessmodelcompetition.com. Look at the videos and click on the video zoom part. This guy had a really lame idea, and he took you, takes you through step by step as a student how he came up with a company and people are throwing money at his business. So death of the death of the business plan competition, rise of the business model competition. Another another contributor to this disruption is the fact that it's hundred times cheaper today to build your business. I'm not going to go into detail. You know all that. Disruption number two. <clears throat> Somebody, somebody showed me this slide the other day, and they said, this is the decline, uh, this is the, um, all the tourists are going home in the venture industry. So if you go, if you go back to the year 2005, 1,229 venture firms did one or more deals a <laughs> year. Fast forward to 2012, 350 firms did one or more deals in that year. That says, that's two-thirds of the industry went on vacation. Um, and went away. There's a massive disruption happening in the venture industry. Front page of the Wall Street Journal, Section C yesterday, talks about the, the, the pullback that's happening in the venture industry. Talks about uh, one of the venture funds up in uh, Seattle fired not seven of their nine partners and pulling back to smaller fund size. I've been on the road. I've raised over $850 million in the last 12 years from institutional investors. They are frustrated. They're not getting returns on the asset class. And it's that the model has not been sustainable for, for most of the investors in the marketplace. And the institutional investors are pulling back, they're not funding. This industry is going through a massive disruption. And, and some people are predicting it, an extinction. I don't, I don't call it an extinction. Now, nature hates a vacuum. So in this vacuum of the venture money pulling back, what's happening? Accelerators have gone crazy. <clears throat> 2005, there was one accelerator, Y Combinator. Today, we have over 150 accelerators as of today, filling this void of early stage financing. Is this another bubble? I believe, I believe it is. 90% of these, these accelerators will fail. Why? Because today, only 13% of them have had an exit. If you're not generating liquidity, you're not going to keep doing it. And the Pareto principle says 80, 20, 90, 10. So the world's going to settle out, and there'll be a few that figure this out and, and disrupt this early stage marketplace. Y Combinator by itself has had 85% of all the exit value, all the 150 accelerators around the world. So you have one that has 85% of the exit value. 48% of the companies associated with these accelerators have not received any financing. So half haven't gotten anything as a, as a participation in that program. Have we seen this before? Go back to 2000, yes we have. So 1980, 12, 12 incubators, 2000, there were a thousand incubators. CMGI and, and these, all these high finding, and what happened to those guys? Not one of those guys succeeded. It was a different time, different area. They didn't have, they didn't have the cloud computing and all the infrastructure. It wasn't a hundred times cheaper to build your business back then. But um, I, as I watched this, um, I, I, I know it's a bubble when my mom calls me up. I'm thinking about doing a, a, a bread accelerator. All right, so here's what's happening right now with the capital. The disruption, of, and we're going to call it disruption number two, entre the rise of entrepreneur capital. As we see here, the number of early stage deals by the venture funds has had a 48% decrease since 2007. But look at the angel deals. 30% uh, increase in angel financing. These angel groups are coming out on early stage, and who are the angel groups? It's a, it's a mix. It's the online crowdfunding, it's, silicon, you know, it's the super angels, it's the seed funds, the pre-seed funds, accelerators. This class of entrepreneur capital is filling the void that has been left by, the, by venture capital firms that are leaving the space by, by force or by choice. And, and there's, a, there's, a, there's a vacuum that's happening here. In any major disruption, the disruptors come from below. 
And it's always the, I don't, that's, 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 that's not really a, co a company or a market or a product. Think about, as Clay Christensen talks about the disruption of the computer industry, the mid-range computer disrupted the, mid, the, mid, the mainframe computer. The mainframe, the PC disrupted the mid-range. Now the mid-range customer went to their customers and said, do you want a PC? And the customer said, are you kidding? No, it's too slow. They had enough memory to run my programs. I wouldn't use that. So existing customers and existing markets don't see the disruption coming. It's the new ones. How does that apply to the venture industry? It's the unfunded. It's the, it's the not, not the top tier high flyer you know, entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley, it's the others. And it's the other funding sources that have, don't have access to the best deals. So if you look at the disruption, it always comes down here and nobody sees it coming, but it comes up and it niches the previous marketplace. A lot of people are predicting a Series A cliff. I think this is a quality first real problem. Lots of seed capital. Seed capital is easier to raise now than it has ever been in the history of the world. If you can't raise seed, seed capital, you have not nailed it. But if you have nailed your breakthrough value proposition, your customer exchange, and your, your market pain, you have a high probability of raising seed capital right now. The problem will come with later on financing sources. But the good news is, the angel investors and these early stage investors are filling that void. So here's what's happening. The number of post-seed angel investments, so this is after the seed, it has grown by 80%. So the angels are coming in, syndicating their deals, working with each other, and following their investments. The seed deals and the angels have dropped off, but others have filled the void. So angels are coming in and have invested almost the equal amount that the venture capital industry has invested. Think differently about your sources of capital. Angels, super angels, and, and these organized groups and you have many, many, many more coming online. What I predict is it's going to be a niching of the venture industry. As these other groups come online, these communities organize, follow the best deals because they were in them early, and only the top tier venture capital firms will survive. They'll still be there. It's not going to go away. Um, and that's kind of a hard prediction to make because that's what I do day to day. So I, I, it's, it's really kind of difficult to see me in that box, but that's where I am right now. And I'm trying to get out. Accelerators are improving the model and they're getting better. If we look at the number of companies done in the accelerator marketplace, Y Combinator is the gorilla, 468, followed by Dave McClure, 500 startups, over, I think over 130 now. And he'll tell you better this afternoon. I think he's probably got 300, was one of the numbers that I heard. Um, in terms of the exits, a uh, billion dollars in exit for Y Combinator and everybody else combined is probably about 100 million. Y Combinator is changing the market and, and, and the best practices here. 20,000K investment, two to, you, you guys probably know these terms better than I do, 2 to 10% equity. Um, they identify talent early on. One of the things I noticed is that Y Combinator has a thing called Hacker News. And you get karma points by participating in Hacker News. Uh, and one of the indicators that I believe what Y Combinator uses is that they watch the Hacker News karma points. And they use that as part of the selection process to identify these high quality hackers and engineers they want to invite into the process. Are they, are they polite? Are they smart? How do they view by their peers? And that good engineers know good engineers. That's one of the quality inputs that we look for when we're making an early stage investment. It, um, they have guaranteed follow on, um, um, and that's, that's dropped recently. And their alumni are, as of um, May of last year, were, were worth 7.78 .7 billion. That's an average of 45.2 million from every single white combinator company that's ever graduated. Uh, now most of that's skewed with, because of a few big exits, a few big, few big companies. They have not figured it out yet though, they're still working on it. They, they shrunk their, their classes last winter from 84 to 50 and they dropped the amount of investment they've given everybody. And Paul Graham just says as, as they scale beyond 66 companies, something broke. And so they're pulling the size back down a little smaller. All right, and so this is my biggest prediction. Prediction number Three is that Derek Anderson. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Where'd my picture go? Oh, Derek took it out. <laughs> oh, that is not nice, Derek. I had a picture of a big fro with Derek out here, <laughs> and he got to my picture. Okay, that's, I guess that's what happens when you control the conference. <laughs> it was just a big old, a big old hairstyle. All right. <laughs> I, I, the prediction was Derek Anderson grows here, so I actually know that they changed it. 
All right, well, thank you for your time today. It was a pleasure spending time with you. And, um, uh,